Hello, welcome to the 1878 FM podcast. Myself, Ped, and Sam today. Dave has pulled a bush and pretended he's working or something. He's doing something <laughs> important on a, at the time of recording, isn't he? So, fair play to him. He's working with cars other than fixing mm. them actual work, though. <laughs> well, he enjoys it, doesn't he? I mean, it's, it's kind of important. It's his job. So, fair play. But yeah. I don't know. So, he's what? Just fueling around, does he? <laughs> oh. We have not know. Dave's uh, no. Sam. Sound Can I ask a question? Do whatever you want. And I think we I've, I'll ask this while Dave's here, but don't no while you, Dave isn't here. Isn't here, sorry. But if anyone's list if anyone's listening, don't tell Dave this question. Does anyone actually listen to that podcast? No. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's cars. Isn't Sam, it? have you listened to? I've not listened to it, but I feel like I should just to show, you know, an olive branch of friendship towards <laughs> the mighty Vitty. Mm. I'd love to see what Dave's cars like as well. Is his car as fancy as the ones he talks about? And is it as clean? Mm. My car's a bin. You got kids though, haven't you? So I can understand why 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 it's a bin. But maybe I, I blame I them. Think, They're never in I my think I think Dave would uh, probably just Dave would probably just have a uh, you know very basic car, so that when he goes to see the nice cars, it makes it even better for him. See what you say. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Playing down. Yeah. Expectation. Yeah. So when he then goes, go he's, his, he's cars, his cars are like, yeah. Oh, look at this car. It's amazing. Yeah. Mate, it's a Ford Focus. Mm. I know, but compared to mine. Mm. Maybe. Maybe. I know, but it's I can't, I can't confirm or deny that because uh, I don't know what car Dave's got. Mm. So. There you go. Right. That's so fuzzy. <laughs> Let's get it over and done with. Mm. Because it was not the greatest game of football, Sam Avery, was it? You know what? I think whoever... You know when Sky have their meetings? Whoever says, half five, let's choose Everton, should be sacked. Yeah. I think from Sky. They are... They're taking the piss out of Sky. Yeah. For me. Because I don't know in what universe anyone thought Everton v Fulham or half five would be good. Any game at Goodison at 5.30 is, is terrible. Full stop. And to pick Everton and Fulham right now. But uh, Sam, it was absolutely woeful as a game of football. Oh my god. It? Awful. It was awful. Mm. I have been more I've been more happy with defeats than that draw. <laughs> and obviously the result the result is a better result than a defeat, obviously. And to, mm. to get it the way we did right at the end, what was it, ninety fourth mm. minute. Mm. After not really looking like we're gonna score. I mean Beto put a couple of he had another header, didn't he, which he'd sort mm. of got on target, but it was never really troubling the keeper. We were just dreadful. And I've I know we've sort of picked the bones out of John Dice's tactic to death on this podcast, but I just mm. could not see what the tactics were other than whack it diagonally, aimlessly. Mm. It was aimless. Mm. It wasn't even get it down the channels and get some crosses into our big centre forward. It was just hit it diagonally with power so there's no real chance of getting any momentum on the ball and it was just it was like just so bad to watch i was so angry and i've forgotten how angry everton made me because we've had four <laughs> four games unbeaten and, and you forget quickly football say i do i forget quickly how bad things have been when you have a, a little glimmer of just a couple of draws a couple of dif- uh, victories and all of a sudden you're back to that and you're like i've forgotten how bad this team can play under this manager, this team is so much better yeah. than what the manager's making the play. I just, mm. I'm, I'm under no illusions that that's not the case because mm. it was just, it was just awful. And uh, right from the start, when when Keane's on the pitch instead of Branthwaite, I, I didn't understand that at all. Mm. And then just the way that they played, and obviously we get we get the draw. Fulham must be absolutely. Yeah. Kicking themselves, yeah, because mm. they played. I mean, they played pretty well. I thought they just yeah, didn't kill yeah. us off when they should have done. And you know, a Wobie, I never thought I'd miss a Wobie's aimless enthusiasm. But <laughs> I, I, I mean, he had the, the freedom of some park, didn't he? he was just, mm. At one point, I, I, I sort of joked. He said, "If we move to Bramley Moor mid-match here, because there's just there was nothing <laughs> there. There was nothing there yeah, at all." It was. Uh, um, well, sorry, but in the end, you know, he, he wasn't very good at the weekend, mm. but I. I I don't know what. what I don't know do. what. It's not even that. I, I, if I was him, I'd, I'd just go and say, I say, just put me on the bench. 
that I can't be asked because mm-hmm. smashing balls from the goalkeeper, straight long kicks down the middle of the pitch with two big rocks he's up against, and then having no one who even runs to get anywhere near him. Mm-hmm. I, I mm-hmm. that to me is a tactic that went out in the bottom nineteen seventy. Um, because what I said to me, Matt's thing, if he's gonna, if that's Sean Dyche's best, if that's what he, that's that's his his thing, his mo, mm-hmm. go all in. Go all in. Burnley were four four two, bollock long ball crap. I hated watching it. I hated when they come to Goodlush and they were horrible to to watch. But he's half and half with us. He plays that way and it's awful. But he doesn't actually give the striker support. So throw two strikers up front and just kick it long and be done with it, and we'll all accept what we are. Because that's imba- it was embarrassing watching that on Saturday. Absolutely embarrassing. Yeah, it was one of the. It probably was the worst performance of the season. It was, it was it, the worst performance for about fifteen it years. Was, it was, it as was, a game of football. It was absolutely dreadful. Um, you're right. I think there's like I think with, I think Brantwick should have played. I'm not. I just. I don't get. I don't get this. I'm sorry, but Michael Keenstone, all right, but it. That's just, for me. I find that pathetic. I find that pathetic. It's just a shit house trick. Oh, I can't drop me mate. I just find that poor. I think Brantwaite has to start. Brantwaite, you play, you can squeeze up a bit more because he's got pace in, and you can get back. I just watch the way they play. They look play and set up, really and they're well just coached. they're just light years ahead of us. The full backs go forward. The midfield. I thought Sander Baird had a really good game. Just sitting in midfield, just the Metrodome, just mm. that. Just we got two in there. They only had to have one, so everybody else could be busy. Um, and again, I think, I think our. Some of our fans have been dumbed down by the approach of it all. Of uh, well, you know, this is what you could, this is what it could be like, and it, it doesn't have to be like that at all. You know, I've had conversations with people going, you know, squad, this is the squad's terrible, and it's like it could be better. You know, it's like we've been dumbed down into thinking that these, you know, this squad is absolutely terrible, and the way we play is the only way we play. And as you just said, I don't even think we go all in no. on that either, because I think he knows he can't no. go all in in a Burnley style. I think he knows our fans wouldn't have it. I think the, our fans have showed before they won't have it. Um, but he doesn't know the other way. They tried to play out from the back, but they can't do it because the the fullbacks are not advanced enough to give mm. a high enough ball. So you're trying to get out of the back, but your fullbacks are in line with your centre back. So where are you going to go? You need a centre back, a centre midfielder then to drop in. You know, you look looking in die on this heat map. He's picking the ball up in our own half. He should never be picking up the, the, the ball in our own half though. Yeah, but if he's if he's having to drop in our own half, then again. That's where the fullbacks, the fullbacks should be in their half. So when Dye's further forward, it's all these little knock-on effects. Mm-hmm. His subs were dreadful. The fact that he took Dominic Carver Lewin off and Mike and and then Michael Keane ends up going up front is is just honestly I find that. Well, that, I was find like, that, that was like the, 19, the 1990s or something, wasn't it? You just don't get that anymore. I, I can't think mm. of any other team that would do that. And it just, I, it, it just got me really angry that we. And, and I know in the end we score, but I, we shouldn't be playing that in 2024. And the fullbacks, like you say, Ped, are just the fullbacks in the modern game have got to go forward, not just to provide an attack and threat, but they've got to ask questions of the other fullbacks, and you've got to be able yeah. to be pinning pinning players back. And if you don't do that, then they they've got the freedom. And they can just, you know, go down the channels then, and it's 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 really poor. It's really really. Mm. Poor. And what's Dom meant to do with those diagonal balls? There's not anything mm. to do with them. There's no one to knock them onto. There's, yeah. He can't bring them down because he's got those two big fellas behind him. Mm. And it's just like I, I, I don't know why he, he's certain players just keep going in because uh, Dice doesn't strike me as someone who's who's intimidated. Certainly, the way he speaks in interviews, but the, his actions say that he is kind of he's he's petrified of certain decisions, and and he he's the one who perpetuates this myth that this squad aren't good enough. Yeah, and he doesn't yeah. say it outright. He says it in certain ways, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. And he he sort of the subtext of what he's saying is, "Look, I'm a magician here, working with yeah, nothing, and I'm doing really." Well. But the reality is, it's not that's not the case. But that's that's the reality he wants to perpetuate because then we all we all give him our plaudits, and I think there's loads of. You talked about the fan ped. I think the erosion of standards has been so gradual over the last mm. well, since Machiri came in, and it really and it yeah. was interesting that I think on the commentary I heard, and I hadn't even thought about this, but Marco Silva was sacked when we were eighth. We finished eighth, and he was sacked, and that blew my mind really. And Marco Silva looked younger now than he did when he left Everton five years yeah. ago. Didn't he? Yeah, 
No, it's it's as I said, the erosion of standards is is the is the big thing. I mean, you know, playing Michael Keane up front. I don't. I know we all had the laugh and joke about it last week, but come on. I mean, it's twenty twenty four. Teams are playing inverted fullbacks. You know, people the wing the fullbacks are playing like wingers now. You know, watching centre backs be converted into into flying fullbacks now. I mean, that's what that's the age we're in. We're in an age where footballers are in any position are technically very good footballers now in any and yet ours, like you watch ours and they just don't seem to understand what they're supposed to do. Like even technical players don't look like like Lindstrom come on and you wouldn't have any idea that he had any clue of what his job was supposed to be when he came on. No. You know, you what you watch our plays and you just think, what are they supposed to do? You know what? Uh, I, I I don't know what more needs to be said. That people watching, they go, "Have we got a point?" And it's like, "Yeah, I know we got a point, but it's Fulham at home. We should be going out there and striving to get three points. These are the games where you, if we beat them, we'd be on the same points as them. They're the games Which you should be. Mad. Yeah, because because they look so much better than us." Mm. They're the teams you should be striving to be better than, and yet you look down and you and you think you, we we do this all the time. We go up against teams like we are playing in the FA Cup, and they are a Premier League team, and we're a League One team. It's it's it it, it boggles mind boggling. It's absolutely mind boggling mm. the way we play, and I think that's that's a disservice to some of the players personally as well. It's a disservice to to some of those players thinking you you're not good enough to play any kind. But he's not good enough. He's not a good enough coach. He's not a good enough coach to teach them how to play that kind of football one, anyway. You're seeing it in front of your eyes. One was a, one's a team coached by a really, really good coach. Yeah, yeah. And the other is a, is a basic coach. And if you throw things down and make your job sound really difficult... Then people fall into the trap. I believe in it. Mm. This Everton team could be coached by Marco Silva and will play miles better and be miles better than could. what it is because it's about moving. You're right about the fullbacks. I was watching Anthony Robinson. I, I don't rate him. I've never rated him. I think he's quick. But the thing about him is he causes unrest in the opposition because he goes the minute they got the ball, he went. Mm. He just flew. It's Kenny Tetty on the But then Kenny Tetty. Uh, Smith Rowe dropping him, picking it up, running him, and a will be dancing around five men at one. You know, it's just you've got to make desperation. decisions there. As the defending team. You've got to then make decisions about well, who do we pick up, who do, do a drop back, do a mm. try and play them offside. What do we do? You, you, then you, they've got they've got decisions to make. You're defending against this Everton team the way we're playing. You know what's going to happen because one in the ground knew what was going to happen. It was going to be another diagonal ball, aimless. And all you have to do is just squeeze Dom and just pick the pick the, the drop ball up because no one's chasing it up. Mm. And it's just it's so predictable. And predictability is not bad if like if it's good to watch, but it's just yeah. predictable and really, really just I mean, it's so bad. And all the blues I've I've spoke to you since. I think we were we're more angry than some defeats we've had. We were like, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. That was terrible. So God knows how Fulham fans must feel today. I'd love to be on a Fulham podcast right now. <laughs> Just to, just to feel the fume because that might make me better. But I've like just too I, nice a fan I've just listened to them there and they were wine tasting. Mm. <laughs> the two nicer fan base to be fuming. They were trying to find that um that that uh, lorry that were full of brie that got stolen. Mm, yeah, they've put a uh, search oh, yeah. for the, yeah. There's a national yeah. search for that. So I think for them they would they must have been gutted because that was so comfortable, yeah. so comfortable. I mean, we've done, Everton have done that in the past, haven't we? You know, absolutely. We have. We've we've been winning and, and haven't killed something off, and the opera allowed them. But it was it was ridiculous. I mean, it was it's just so bad. It was so bad, and I, I can't. I'm bored of. I'm like bored of trying to sort of understand what other people. And it's only it's, it's getting smaller and smaller. But the people who who think that he's doing a good job. I, I just find it mad. And it's not this again. I just don't know what we're trying to do. Like I said before, if it, if you if go all in on it then, if you just, yeah. if, if he's genuine, and again, Sean Dyche has to do it every day. It's his job. So he's got to do it and he's looking after himself. No issue with that. But then do something that works then. Yes, Make well, it horrible. The if it's four four two. And it's a lot. Mm. You just want to play long balls. Then go for it. Then do it, mate. Or play do if you it don't. properly. I'm, yeah, do it. That's you what said I mean. It, cause... Make mm. it horrible. Make it horrible. Yeah. You don't. They just make it dead easy for for the <laughs> opponents. It's so easy. 
And it's <laughs> it, it, it's mm. not even fully committing to the plan, is it? It's just sort of like this half well, look, long ball. Look what happened when Keane went up front, right? The fair, we knocked the long ball up. Michael Keane flicked it on and Beto ran in behind, had the shot and we got a corner. And mm. it was like, that's how you play it. If that's yeah, what you're going to do, do that's how you do it. Mm. You have a striker running off the other one, the other one will win it and get in. Mm. And we got a corner, which we hadn't had. And it was dead simple. Yeah. And it's like, all right, we'll go with that then. If you don't, I don't want to sit there and watch that, but I'd rather sit there and, and watch me striker have someone working with him than mm. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who, let's be honest, isn't a centre forward who you can knock it into, he's going to get it, turn and run at people and yeah. beat them and get it. He's not, he's not that, he's a back no. to goal, he's not number both, nine. Yeah. He's Exactly, and it, it's, you know, you look at it, Breuer might fit that because he runs with it, but Breuer, you don't know whether he's going to be fit or he isn't going to be fit for weeks, but he's someone who can travel with the ball, but he can't do the stuff down there. And it's almost like, just work out what you're going to do because Dwight McNeil was just totally innocuous on mm-hmm. Saturday. He wasn't in the game. At any, he had one header in the first half, which was actually the only one of the only times we played any football. I think we had a little flurry when it's Richard Garner guy at the bar. We had a few minutes after that because yeah. the crowd were up and then it, it dissipated very quickly and the, the second half not happened. But, you know, it's their goal, Sam. I mean, Smith Rowe just oh. goes round people like they're not there because we're lunging in. And then Awobi's got all the time in the world to just pick. I mean, you know, we never done that for us, but all the time in the world to just hit the target and he just passes it beyond Pickford. And it's like, yeah, you know, there was no sort of surprise no. when it went in. It was like, it's been coming. Yeah, yeah. Because don't forget in the first half, I was talking to someone behind me, I said they should have won that. And he said, no, they only had two shots. And I reminded them that they had three in about 30 seconds that they all should have scored. Smith Rowe blazed one over mm, from underneath oh yeah, the bar. A Wobie blazed one over from inside yeah, the six yeah. yard box. Michalenko decided to put them through and just give it to Triori, who went on and picked for made yeah. a good start. Uh, Keane or um, Tarkovsky blocked him, and there's just one that was going in the corner. Mm. They could have been three up at half time, and we wouldn't have been able to say a word. Yeah. People just forget this as the game yeah. goes on and think they didn't yeah. really do it was much. It's like the Palace game, wasn't it? Oh. Exactly. The amount Palace of chances that we've given up again, mm. um, not committing one way or another. Um, it was it was appalling. Um, even when we scored, people didn't really go like ballistic no. for a last minute goal. People no, were just more like, like go out, well, thank. I was just happy for Beto. Yeah, and like, I that. was happy for Beto. Yeah, all yeah. didn't deserve I, I, it, but he did. That was one of the few positives I think from the game. I always try and think, even a performance mm. like that, I always try and yeah. think one of the positives. I thought Ashley Young's assist he was put, really, really. Mm. Uh, he played quite well, Young. Which mm. Michalenko on the other side probably would have just blasted that across goal or <laughs> into the stands. It, just mm. like he had his slippers on, just you know, did it over. And he, just on it, yeah. he, 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 he he looks, he looks, you know, he shouldn't be in our team because he's, he's mm. proper old. So, what, <laughs> we've got some Halloween decorate. We've got some Halloween decorations in the front of our garden, like skeletons with their hands mm. covered at the ground. Some fella in the room went, "Are they old Evertonians?" Went, "That's mm. actually young there." <laughs> That's what yeah. I thought was a bit unkind. Yeah, because he has played well and he is doing, yeah, he he's has. doing it. He's doing what's being asked of him the last mm. few weeks, but. Um, that was positive, but like we said, Beto's goal and Beto's, he, he seems really emotional. I don't, I, I didn't quite yeah, understand I don't why, what, why that was, no. but he's really emotional on the pitch and in the interview afterwards. He was mm. holding back tears, so obviously pleased for for him. Mm. And then you think, will that be the making of his Everton career? And I, I, I don't think it will be because I don't think no. he's good enough. But I'm pleased that he's good. Mm. So well done to the lad. Yeah, he was he was the bright spot, and obviously Adrissa Garner guy just played with the slippers, best player on the pitch mm. by far. Um, in terms of always being involved in the game, whereas others, well, again, I can't even. It's just a horrible mix. The players aren't playing to the best of their ability. The manager's dumbing them down, so it's not helping them. And it's still, a, it's the, I don't know the tactics just. I just don't understand what you, what we want our striker to do. I really, I, it just puzzles me. And as a, as you know, a centre forward and as someone who watches strikers closely, I, I just look and think I, I, I don't really. Even though he wasn't sort of at his sharpest, I still looked and thought, what? Like he's not missing fifteen chances, is he? He's not. You know, I watched again. I'll, I'll bring it back to kids' footy. Zach plays for the team on Saturday and. They're exactly the same. He's on his own with three defenders all the time. You're like, no one gets up with him. And it's like, that's kids' footy. 
was like, I'm seeing it from professionals. It's like, where's our? Why aren't we having men round them? We should have four who are always round. Again, it's it's a it's a fundamental like negative negativity that runs through the team, isn't it? That it's like we're gonna we're gonna get to the point, Sally, we need to get to, and it's gonna be yeah, just very 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 gradual. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like don't lose games of football. Grab a point. We'll win occasional games like we did last week. Mm-hmm. And that'll get us to where we need to be, but we're not like exactly advancing. And for Sean Dice, that's that's the job, isn't he? That's the job for him because mm. he'll probably mm. know he's out of a job in the summer. And all he's want, all he's got to do is keep his CV nice and healthy. You know, I, mm. I was asked to keep Everton up, and I kept Everton mm. up, and nothing else really matters for us. It's just we sit there and we're just like. We pay money, but don't we expect we expect a little bit more of, of our team moving forward and, and I don't think we're gonna get it. And I think the thing with Dom and is I, I you know, you watch the game. No one gets near him, no one's really off him. McNeil's not really a supporting player as such. And you know, again, it's like the commentators are saying with Boo and Beto coming on and it's just like, What are you talking about? Yeah. We'll, we'll boo yeah. the, the sh- that's what they said. They said we boo with Boo and Beto mm. coming on. Um and again, that's a thing. That's that's a narrative that's pushed. It happens. It, we're, people are not happy about the show because they're like we're one nil behind at Goodison Park. Never be taking a strike. Put better up with Dominic Carvalho. And on. if it's not working, that's the f- like. I know I've seen all the comments and stuff. Like Beto isn't going to lead Everton's line because he doesn't have the attributes. You know, he doesn't have the attributes to do that, right? But he should be getting coached or they should be getting coached how to play together so that when the moments are that he comes on or even dare I say start games together they know what they're doing and who's dropping and who's doing what and if that means that Don has to be the one who sort of has to take that on being a little bit more of an intelligent all round player I think then he drops in and Beto it's the channels or whatever or if they're going long and it's flick-ons Beto's got to know where the run's going to be for the flick and all that kind of thing that's something you should be working on day in and day out and I just find it I just find it staggering that Beto's been here a year Dom's been fit basically a year and there's no nothing there at all that's that's incredible and the manager let's be honest got out of jail because Dwight McNeil got injured mm. and it forced him into that sub Mm. Which, by the way, he didn't have a clue what was going on. No. Why we were playing with start a game with ten men. We were playing with ten men, and then he shoved Michael Keane up front mm. and put Brantley. Brantley wasn't back. even ready. No, he'd warned It's, Paris it's crazy. It's it's, it's crazy. Mm. But well, that's I, where we I'd are. I'd be just as angry today if we'd won that game somehow two one. Like mm. I'd I'd be just annoyed and frustrated, and of course more pleased with the result. But it was such a bad performance that. The results kind of secondary because it just it just amplifies all of that your shortcomings. And I always wonder with a coaching staff you've got around you, if we don't know as fans what 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 are the team trying to do, what is he trying to do? You say play long ball, commit to it, or or don't do something different. But it's kind of half our station of it. But what are the coaching staff doing around him? And and then you start to think, well. You know, a lot, a lot of managers have the same coaching staff all the time, and you wonder mm. how much kind of questioning the coaching staff do, and mm. they're just all, yeah, yeah. you know, four heads of the same brain, basically, where they're just all kind of going, let's just see the season out, keep our CV clean, like you say, and just, you know, yeah. get, you know, sit, sit on the sofa for a bit and then move for the next job, because he'll get another job. He'll get another job. He'll never get a job at a club as big as Everton again. No. Um, I think he'll thank he'll, you for he'll that, though. Job. I think he'd thank yeah, you for that, Sam. Will. I think he'd, I think he would thank mm-hmm. you for that because I don't think he can handle a club like Heaven. I don't think he's got, I don't think he's got anything, anything in his locker. I don't think he's he can handle the criticism. I don't think he can handle the expectation. I don't think he can handle anything about being the Everton manager. You listen to every, I listen to every single press conference, and. The amount of dumb and down that I hear is extraordinary. Absolutely. Ex- I haven't listened. To, I couldn't listen to a second of it, but didn't he? So I saw him walking the dog this morning and I was talking to someone. He said, he, I don't know if this is accurate, but he was saying, because he was fuming about him, he's the worst manager we've ever had and all that. But he was saying, um, he mentioned something like it was like that before I got here again. He can't still be talking from two years ago. He <laughs> can't, because that is full. Tories when they were in charge yeah. blaming Labour for many people well, in charge for it. You can't because once you're at a club for three months, it your stamps on it. You have fourteen new players and spent all you know, odd 
So what's it? Seventy odd million more than Benitez got now, mm. and and his went records worse than Benitez. So, but th- there's a lot of that though, isn't it? There's a lot of dumb and down. There's mm. a lot of um, and it does. But you do see it. Do you see it play a part? And we've seen it before. It does play a part in the way people look at him. You know, it's it's crazy the way. He gets loaded, he's, he's, you know, and I, I understand from the outside. People look from the outside and they go, you know, I get that because they're not they're not seeing it every single day. They don't mm-hmm. they don't understand the every single day um, what we see. They just see Evan the again. pain. Yeah, well, they just look at it and go, the results are fine and all this, and mm-hmm. and there'll be people going, what listening to this? I imagine who were who were you know Evan fans going, what are you just moaning about? Mm-hmm. But when you're sitting there. And you just want to be slightly entertained, <laughs> slightly. <laughs> but it's not even entertainment, though. It's not even entertainment. What it is is it's a fundamental knowledge of that I think we all have as football fans of where football is going and how it's being played, and how if you don't match what someone else is doing, you're going to be left behind anyway. Never mind it. Already left behind. Never mind anything else. But even just coming back to the lowest common denominator, we all knew. We all absolutely knew Beto should have come on with Dominic Carvalho living. And the fact that Michael Keane went up front, basically, and we scored, basically proves, as a fan base, we were correct. If it should have been 4-4-2, it should have been Dom up front with Beto. And, and who knows? And, you know, I'll never accept Satan the centre-forward off when you're behind their own. No, no. Never. Watched Everton a long time. Never ever. He's the only manager I think I've seen. He just he, he just takes strikers off. He's done it all the time he's been here. Took one off and put another one on. I don't get it. I don't get it. At home. I don't mind. I've said it before. Go away nineteen times and bore the shite out of every mm. away fan. As in in the in this not our fans, but the, the opposition fans mm. and grind out results. We look far more comfortable because we can go there and go, Oh, we're not good enough, so we'll sit in and hope we get a set piece. But at home, we can't play like that. We can't because we're giving up the ball to teams who well, aren't yeah, well, much well, better. Well, we made, put it this way, right, if Everton would have gone out and just played a more expansive brand of football, we would have made Fulham look a lot worse than mm-hmm. what, what what we did do. We made them look really, don't get me wrong, they're well coached and they move off the ball. We've got bet more ability in that squad than what we portray. And at home, we should be going after everybody. Okay, there'll be Man City got to be careful but sitting back and hoping they beat you anyway so mm. you've got to make a decision on that um but i don't understand again the the gentleman i was talking to this morning said i don't understand the the fact that he's made everyone believe we're the underdogs in every single game we play yeah and it, it, that's the thing well, for that's me that at home i know but we can't. No, that's what i'm saying that suits him no not us that suits him as a manager Mm. He he protects him. He's protecting himself. He used to say this about Moyes, and I, I used to be like, mm, yeah, you know, we understand what you're saying, but that was to to three or four teams. Mm. He'd play it down. Yeah, other teams. David yeah. Moyes went after yeah, everybody. Yeah. They went after everyone of them. them. Yeah, went after went, them. and it was always interesting to see the, the slight change in tactics under Moyes when mm. Arsenal, Man U, Man yeah, City, yeah, yeah. Both come, come to mm. Goodison, and then the, to be a slightly different like. Approach to it. Otherwise, mm. they just went at them like like a pack of wolves, didn't you? It was You've great got to watch. Though, you? Concerted pressure. Mm. Yeah, you know this, this. Yeah, this team. This team are capable of a bit more to be mm. kind and yeah, uh, yeah. a lot more if you want to be a bit more optimistic. Well, listen, yeah, the the truth will be somewhere in between. Sam Mona, you know, there'll be people who think we could be. Could you see it? We win a couple of games, or we we can get into Europe. That's that's you know. A little, that's proper blue sky optimism, thinking, isn't it? Yeah. But real optimism. But I definitely feel like we could, we could do a lot more than what we're doing, and go after these teams mm. at home and really make them feel like they're in a game. You know, and you talk about standards there, and just for people who will jump on it, Marco Silva, Everton was seventeenth when he got sacked, but they had the, the season he was here. We we did finish eighth, and then, but he he'd lost three games on the run, and they sacked him. He had to go because we'd lost three on the run. That was the standards, and that's 2019 to now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was, and yet, Marco, we, we'd done something the other day. He was, a, he was a really good coach. He made the wrong decision, in my opinion, with Bowen Morty stuff, but he was a good coach. But Everton was a different club then. If you, yeah. you hit the, the, yeah. 
you know, three defeats put you, you know, uh, put you in the, the sack zone and, and he fell for it. And, you know, United have chased Ten Hag, who's another manager who, for me, had been there over two years. And I, I haven't have a clue what Manchester United were trying to do. I don't understand how you can be in a job for that period of time and have nothing that you can put your hat on. <laughs> nothing. Honestly, I don't. It doesn't matter what level you're at. No, okay. If, you, if you're there for two years and you watch your team, and it just looks like 11 individuals. It's more about the coach than it is about the players. Do you know what I mean? And uh, and I, I feel like that with Everton. I don't understand how you can be two years in and there's nothing. It's just, it's almost like you start it, from scratch every single game yeah. you play. And some, is, some days it just, will go all right. Isn't that just like the, the the standards that we've talked about just being eroded gradually? It is gradually, yeah, yeah. so you barely notice. It's like the fog and the... What is it, the frog in yeah. the boiling water? Mm-hmm. And yeah, you yeah. just don't notice it. Because you would think for Silver to finish eighth one season and then be back in 17th the following season, you'd think that would buy him some credit, but it didn't at the time. And at the time, it was the right decision, I thought. Cause he, yeah, he, yeah. He, mm-hmm. he was too big lost, for him at the time. Mm-hmm. But now we've got a manager who's just scraping by, but it's that narrative that he just perpetuates and creates that we are punching above our waist and mm-hmm. he's doing this amazing job. And if you say something enough times, enough people will believe. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. That yeah, of course. To become like the perceived truth. So it's there. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I, I, I just, again, this is just for me. This isn't even like the Sean Dyche thing of oh my god. You know, it's go all in on what your your principles are because they wear it barely. Knock the ball long, and and make it awkward for people. Well, go all in on it then, Sean. Do we stick two up there and go? Get two wide. If you don't want to play 4-4-2, four, four, move to three at the back then. Play two wing-backs, put three lads in midfield so you never get overrun in midfield and knock it long and have a lad helping Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I don't think you've got two You've got two lads on the pitch. You can sc- Beto will get goals. Dom, Dom could have played all day, Saturday. He would never have scored. He'd have never got himself in the areas Beto did because he's just not doing that. Beto will always get goals because he's horrible and awkward. But he can't be pulling things down and holding three defenders off because he doesn't want that. He wants to spin and get in behind. Use the two of them. And then when Chimiti's back, use Chimiti. Or when Breuer's back, use Breuer with Dom. Or if Dom isn't doing it, use Breuer with Beto or Breuer and, and Chimiti. Use the players. Change something. Don't just go, we always play this this 4-3-3. But it isn't 4-3-3 because it's 4 5 one. And yet our strike is so isolated. That's all I want. I'm not. It's not even about get lights out today. What it is is go all in on what you believe. You like the long diagonal balls. Put more men around the ball, in, and you know what? You might get it. Hmm. That's that's my frustration. Is it's like it's a halfway out that isn't working. I just can't wait till May. <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, yeah. honestly, because I want to fast forward. No, I do. I want to. I want to. I want to. Sam, I want a Rocky montage. <laughs> <laughs> I want a Rocky Rocky montage of um Who's he? Did he play four three three or what? I want a Rocky well mm. doesn't like the coffee, I know that. Mm. Um <laughs> I want a Rocky montage to, of like everything till May because it just it that's the way it's all that's happening, isn't it? We are gonna go but everything is just to get to May. Yeah. End of the season, getting to the new ground and everything and it, to get the owners. Everything in between is just going to be ups and downs of, mm. this, of variations of shite, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Twelve it's de- just water. Well, it's 12 degrees of Jack Harrison, isn't it? It's like which Jack Harrison will turn up today. It's the same thing, isn't it? He's <laughs> not helped, though, is he? He's another no, I know, one. But, what what I, no, no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not going to say it. He's another one. He's like runs his bollocks off. McNeil had done nothing on Saturday, and you knew the minute the number went off, it was Harrison who was going off. Why not do something wacky like take McNeil off, put in Jai, you know, in his position that he plays most of his career, yeah. and put Harrison on the left, you know, left foot across it, and he didn't. It was just anyway. that you knew he was coming off. Listen, but let's anyway. move on. This is the last. Yeah. Go on. This is the last podcast of the Ned era. Well, it is the Ned era. Mm. You know, I don't know yeah. whether we didn't want to really address that mm. um, of October. So the next podcast will be in November. All oh, right. November is a time you start. You start thinking just a little bit about Christmas and buying yeah. Christmas presents. Yeah. And do you know what would the ideal Christmas present for anyone this year will be? Tickets to see Sam Avery. It's oh, a great show. That's a, it, fabulous. That in is his a great tour show. in 2025, that where he'll be great. going to such places as Norwich. You going to Norwich, <laughs> Sam? <laughs> I'm the first date is in Norwich. I see. First I knew date. it. I knew it. Bit of a threat. Are that. you going to Colchester? I'm going to Colchester oh. just afterwards. 
Why wouldn't you? Wow, <laughs> this is like Darren, Darren Brown stuff, this. Darren <laughs> Brown telling you. Are you Darren going... Brown, more like it. I know. Are you going to... Darren Brown. No, that's someone else completely. Mm. Are you going to Bristol? <laughs> You've got to go I'll be to in Bristol. Bristol. Yes! Brizzo. Brizzo in the hizzo. Brizzo in the hizzo. This is so, like Sam, come on. It. Come on. You What's go, it like? What's you're it going like? on. Hang on. You're going on tour. So when when do you when does the tour start and how can people start get tickets? On, it will start on the 13th of September next next year. So 25, okay. 26th. So it's basically a year off, but all the tickets will sale over the over the weekend. So right, okay. I'm doing, Perfect uh, Christmas gifts. I'm doing yeah. September right through until February in 2026. <sighs> so. What's going to happen is people are going to buy tickets and then turn mm. up a year early, which has happened more than you would think. And no, I, I um, people saying, I know people I've have just turned that. up in Swindon yeah. a year mm. early. What you mm. want to say is, you absolute knobhead, but what you have to say is, oh, sorry, you're a year early. The, Thanks for buying a ticket. The irony but, is, they turn up a year early in Swindon, but Swindon's still in 1995. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so you're always Obviously. a year. A so, yeah. Late. So you've, uh, yeah. How do you go about, like, how do you go about? Booking it is it is it like you just go? Do you know what people liked me in Bristol? I'll go back. Kind of, yeah. This is the fifth tour I've done now in the UK, so I've kind of got a good handle on where I'm popular and where I'm certainly not popular. So um, where are you I, not I, I popular? To... Um, <laughs> do you know what? There's one place where I'm going back to <laughs> where I was never popular. And I don't know why. So I'm, I've got a promoter who books all the dates for me, hmm. and one of the dates booked is in a place called Borden. And I don't know mm. where it is. More like boredom. But I went there last time and there was about yeah. 20 people there and it was terrible. I don't know why he sent me back there. Now, that was pre-COVID. So unless yeah. COVID's changed something in terms of my yeah. standing in boredom. But uh, I'll keep you posted on that because that's the first date that leapt off the page. I was like, why is he sending me there? Why is he playing Jack Allison on the right? And why am I going to boredom? That's basically the, the promotional. Where's boredom? Of that. So is there a school there? Ah, oh, that's a terrible no. joke. Okay, that's a terrible. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, they invented skills. Yeah, it feels they like invented it skills where you lock like everybody up, which feels a bit weird. Yeah, it <laughs> it's called thunderstorm, and I've given it that name because uh, you've got to come up with a title like way over a year before you write the show. So mm, I don't nice. know what it's going to be about, but it'll be a comedy show and it'll be funny. And thunderstorm, you can kind of go, yeah, that kind of relates to Eddie and everything. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. I, I, I do love doing these shows. So do you? doing the playhouse in Liverpool, that's a big oh, one for me. Lovely. So that's lovely. on the uh, 21st of November next year. Nice. So quite a few tickets have gone for that already. So you'd expect it. If you're in the Liverpool gigs. City region, get yourself down there. Do it. The mm. Liverpool playhouse. Brilliant. So the tour, Thunderstorm, Sam Avery's Thunderstorm. Get involved. Why wouldn't you? Great These are the these are the Christmas presents you can get now. Put away and then people have a lovely little. Uh, well, I always. I, that's what like I get from my mum and dad now. Yeah, I get yeah, them like uh, I get them like show tickets and stuff. Now mm. I probably won't get them yeah. Sam tickets for Sambo. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I always get them like you know because it's dead easy, isn't it? Mm. It's one of those things you like. Loads of places do a meal and or, and with a play and stuff. Mm. And no, your mum and dad has to get older are really hard to buy for. So oh mm. yeah. Yeah, you know, because your dad will so just I, go. I, I don't message. want anything. Mm. Go on. I, I had a message on Twitter from uh, a, a Everton fan who's who lives in South End. Well, I'll be on the third of October, twenty twenty five, at the Palace Theatre. He awesome. messaged me saying, "Beautiful, oh, I've just bought two tickets, and hopefully Andy Bush will come as well." Because he, he seemed to think he lived in South End. I don't know if you can confirm that. It doesn't South live far Shit. from South End. Yeah, I, won't, yeah. I won't say where he exactly okay. lives because that would, you know, people will be round no, with his bush, bush looking for the moustache. No. <laughs> Looking for the Looking bush for his bongos. Maybe. Maybe. That'd be good, yeah. That'd be good if you could hit up with Bush, wouldn't it? Mm, Little get meetup. Bush on stage. Mm. Not and beat a bit of Bush yeah. on stage. Well, I mean, lots do, but yeah, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> you could get it with Sam and, you know, whispering in his ear and mm. recreating. Be good. Be good. But I hope his moustache is gone on. It makes no. it all nerve me, his moustache. Nah, well, fair play. You know. It's not for everyone, is it? But... No. No, like no. it, but only from distance. So I wouldn't and it is November. I thought he's gone very early with November, hasn't he? Given, well, but it's considered it's October, yeah. It's October, but Friday. But then maybe he's, <laughs> maybe he's ahead. He's a trendsetter. Because he's thinking by the time November comes, it'll be bushy. 
and uh, everyone say that's a fine moustache. Oh, she on C. Mm. Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Is um, it cheating though? Are you supposed no. to like start in November. Yeah, November? I think that's is the it... whole point. You don't get shaved yeah. in, in November. November. Yeah. And isn't there another you ever one? You No, not November. That's what Ned does for the whole year, though, doesn't he? Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> um, but um, I haven't tried it. No, no, I, no. I have a. Con- I uh, keep consistency. Yeah, you have a wife. I tried that, and I just looked like someone that shouldn't be allowed near school. So I just shaved yeah. it. Off. I just didn't want to walk around looking like that. To be honest, not. It's not. It's not a good look. No, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think, yeah. I don't think anyone looks good with the moustache, but hey, apart from Tom Selleck, obviously. Yeah, Tom Selleck. Um, I was reading something about conspiracy theory. It was just a thing of in a conversation, but I, I, I thought, what's the conspiracy theory mm. you wish is true, though? So you've heard one, and you're yeah. thinking, yeah, nonsense, that, but what's one that you actually think, I hope that's 100% true? Have you got one that you, you sort of want to really double down on? Or one that you've heard that's absurd, but you mm. think, I'd actually love that to be true. Because obviously there's the pigeons of government spies. That'd be, that's a fun, that's, yeah. that's a funny one, isn't it? Imagine if they really were government spies, pigeons, if they mm. weren't real. Some people. of them probably could get in the cabinet. Probably, yeah. But at any time. At any time, at any just government. generally. Yeah, yeah. Um, just off the top of my head, and I do like a good conspiracy. Not a, mm. not like a modern conspiracy. A modern conspiracy is a crap. Mm. Right? All this, whatever, whatever, yeah. you know, all the modern stuff. I like mm. proper old school conspiracies okay. like JFK, the mm. moon, all that. Yeah. I love a bit of that. So yeah. you can make a good film out yeah, of it and all yeah, that kind yeah, of yeah. Mine is that, um, mine is that the royal family uh, are werewolves. Werewolves? Yeah, that's a. I know they all talk about the lizards. Yeah. But there is a I've like. Heard the lizards. I've not heard the werewolves. You've not heard the werewolves? No. So there's a, genuine no, th- there's a genuine thing about like that. Um, I think it was like Queen Victoria. Hmm. There's a genuine thing that. I don't know whether it was her or someone before her, but one of them got bit by a by a, by a wolf. Because obviously, I mean, we we see wolves now as like, and it is ha- nearly Halloween. We hmm. see wolves as like, or werewolves as these like, I don't know, extraordinary sort of. We put them in a bracket, which is almost like not they're not real, but but they are real. And they used to roam around this country till probably people went out and started shooting them all. <laughs> mm. They are genuine things. And I know there are places in this country they were like, they want to bring them well, back. The Midlands, obviously, yeah. full of wolves. Yeah. They want to bring them back, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Yeah. Um, but there, there is a conspiracy that the that the royal family's got werewolf blood in it. And, and I, I, I'm all so for that. that uh, so you just. You know, they know a full moon's coming, so they just have to lock themselves away for the, for the night. Yeah, go, yeah. Well, have, have you ever seen <sighs> Prince Edward open a Tesco under a full moon? Because I haven't. Exactly. So, or be it a... Or be make, it a um... Makes you think, doesn't it? Are but... you doubling down on Prince Edward as being the werewolf? Or is it no, not of... Prince Edward as such, but, you know, you know... There's other see... ones you don't see anymore. No, you don't, you don't see them. Some of them don't go, won't, won't go anywhere near any kind of island mm. or any kind of a pizza establishment. Doing a full I mean, moon. Scoop, scoop's good. Maybe that's why they don't sweat. What scoop? Uh, yeah. On Netflix. Maybe that's why they don't sweat. Because the way just yeah. pant. Mm. Yeah, fast panting. <laughs> okay. Fast panting. Maybe, maybe that's why, they, for, that maybe that's why yeah. they forget they had pictures taken with certain people. Probably. Because don't at that time they were in like werewolf, werewolf mode. Werewolf mode. Fair play. What scoop? It's good. Rufus mm. Sewell. Jillian Anderson. Yeah, let me see if I can. Yeah, this is the, fir- this the first thing that popped Go up. Go on, eh? Are, royal, are the royal family actually werewolves? Okay. Do you, you it know, just feels a bit... It feels a bit out there. But that's, that's the first hit. That's the actual thing in Doctor Do you remember when uh, Dave Ike went on Wogan in the 80s? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he started talking about wearing purple, and how mm-hmm. purple's a positive colour. And it was mm-hmm. kind of, you know, everyone goes, that's nice, that's nice. Yeah. A bit. And then he started mm-hmm. saying, the royal family are all shape-shifting lizards. And mm-hmm. uh, everyone started laughing at him. Mm-hmm. Because that's like Who's the, laughing the big now? one, isn't it? Yeah. Who's lizards. laughing now? But mm-hmm. I've always thought, if the Royal Family can shapeshift, why have they chosen the, the yeah. human forms that they have? Because I'd, I'd choose something more yeah. akin to, cl- you know, clearly. Yeah, but isn't that isn't that all part of it? Be non-descript. I mean, it might be, but I'd just be no, too vain to, to look What's like, mad is, some know, of what David Ike like said has actually happened, which is a bit weird. Bits of it, which is a bit weird. Yeah. What's your one, I, Sam? But, but, well, <clears throat> mine would be... Something like because a lot of conspiracy theories, the reason why people buy into them is because they give a really simple solution, mm. simple explanation to a very complex problem. I mm. would love someone to say there are actually only three people who run the world. Then okay. I could kind of 
goes to bed at night thinking, oh, it's those three people's fault rather than the fact that human beings are insane. It's just mm. chaos out there. Yeah. I'd also love someone to come home one day and just say to me, by the way, Father Christmas is actually real. I don't know if you can call Father Christmas a conspiracy theory. No, I, I feel I'm, like... I'm... <laughs> I can understand why so many people are into conspiracy theories because we spend, what, like 10 years telling your kids the Father Christmas is real and then you just mm-hmm. go, by the way, that was all made up. They go, well, maybe the air's flat. Mm-hmm. Whole life's been a lie. Mind, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Father Christmas what about is real. You, I don't know what you're on about. I think um, <laughs> not going to the moon. I, I really don't want that to be the... I want that to be... Just set up in, you know, Area 51. Big lights, soft boxes everywhere. Ned, someone like Ned saying, oh, you haven't got that quite right, you know, and not doing the, the, the continuity not there. And someone's got the hair dryer on the flag and then someone's gone, oh, the flag shouldn't blow. There's no wind and oh, and all of this. Uh, you know, it, it's I like that because when you see the what allegedly landed on the moon, tin foil round the legs of that thing it's incredible it's incredible how that you set that off from here bit of tin foil wasn't even like properly secured and it's wobbling everywhere and then it gets down and all yeah so i'd love someone to come up and just go they're never gonna do it of course because they'd be admitting they blagged everyone but and i think ones after that probably went there but um yeah be funny if someone just come out and went listen as if they went the moon they were here look and this is it That'd be great, though. That'd be an interesting one. Then you could go and visit the site where they filmed that's it. That's what I mean. You? You Double do tourism. Yeah, but that's Make that's why I then. feel like it did happen, because by now the Americans would have opened the theme park of the place it did. Oh, they they did have got a lot of Yeah, they would have parks. monetized it. Do you know They've what I mean? Area 51. You could have a T-shirt was... saying, Hang they, on. they didn't go to the moon, and neither did I. Mm. And a T-shirt. But that is good. The gift shop. Monetized it. Area 51 Monetized is... billions of dollars no. every single year, it... mate. But, but area 51 you can't get anywhere near so you know what i mean so if it was like somewhere you could get to you'd be you know so mm. yeah that happened so yeah. unlucky but um but it beat that well you know there's more chance that didn't happen than the royal family werewolves well the, 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 the royal family werewolves actually comes from the fact that they've got some kind of um they have got some kind of blood Nothing we've Some kind blood. of uh, weird blood thing. So um, weird blood. No, it's thing. a weird blood thing. I'm trying to find okay. the right word. Uh, this, uh, yeah, they've it's got a. Term. Yeah, they've got they've got a weird they've got a weird blood. What about the what about that? Um, Paul McCartney died, and they just got someone else as equally talented. He's See, I prefer Avril Lavigne. Well, Avril Lavigne's the mad one. Yeah. Just why would anyone? Oh, I haven't heard this one. Please enlighten no. me. Well, Avril Lavigne, she's she is very much in the Paul McCartney mm. um, one where she died in like the two th- early two nice. thousands, and yeah. they replaced her. And there's all pictures if you go online of a jaw being slightly different and stuff. And uh, they've just got a mad replacement in for her. But mm. listen, if they've replaced her, I watched, I saw her at a Glastonbury, you know, earlier in the year, and she was fantastic. Mm. So they've done a good job replacing her. Well, that was the same with Paul, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, to get yeah. two Ooh, people yeah, with the head wobble. Yeah. He yeah. could wobble the head and was talented. Yeah. And then this fella's still going off strong in his 80s or whatever, yeah, yeah. or about to get 80. Deep. And he like. picked well, didn't he? Mm, they done well. They, they picked well. well because... It'd be funny, though, if they picked a really jag version. Like, you remember yeah. Stella Street that used to be up with yeah. those two fellas doing the impressions? You just have, yeah. like, you know, some Stella absolutely... Paul, Paul McCartney to Stella no, Street. Brilliant Stella Street. Oh, yeah, it was Mick it was, Keith on it in the yeah, the, yeah. Jag, the Jag is a, the Jag is amazing. Look at like the state of these peaches. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be my mate's party piece. He'd just go into any anywhere in town and just start jagging <laughs> like it was brilliant. This was like, just just like, jagging. Honestly, just like what a into, vibe. like you yeah. know, he just walk into an old man's pub and it didn't matter <laughs> what music was on. He'd just be going. <laughs> like, was, but he was brilliant at it, and people would be looking at him going. What what the f- what, what are you, what are on, you doing? What are you doing? Like you know what I mean? Replacing. Like, did you ever watch Game On, Sam? Martin. Oh, briefly. T Martin. Yeah. Oh, mate. When they <laughs> when they replaced the original, it was Ben Thingy, wasn't it? He was the original. It was in series one, and ben they replaced Thingy. them. What a guy! I can't remember the second name is, but they replaced them. They did in uh, the second season. With uh, someone who looked nothing like Well, him. no, well, he was Ben Chapman. So yeah. Ben Chapman, like, black hair, has yeah. done loads of good stuff, actually. 
and like a cool looks yeah, like yeah. a cool thingy but obviously the irony was he wouldn't, couldn't go out he had yeah. agoraphobia and he couldn't yeah. leave the flat could he and then they replaced them with um I can't remember his name he's red he almost had like blonde yeah he's like a short yeah, ass short thingy Neil Stook is mm. it Neil Stook replaced oh, them yeah. famous Neil Stook. Neil Stook and the fit and obviously Sam Janus was in it and, and Martin he was in it wasn't he and um the, the first episode of the new series, they hadn't referenced <clears throat> anything all the way through. It was brilliant. No one said a word. He was just, you know, yeah, he was just the same. Didn't say a word. And they sit down to watch telly at the very end yeah. of the episode. And they comment that the character's being replaced mm. by someone. And they went, oh, that's doesn't, good. Even, doesn't even look anything like him. And then he just sort of like the eyes just sort of went to the yeah. new one and then it went oh, off, you know, nice. the thing. It was cool that's the way nice. they did it. But that, uh, what a, I, I, the, the way on Neighbours did always replace actor with like a different actor, the same mm. character. I think Lucy was like three different actors. And the third time she turned up, she she looked not unlike her. She had blonde hair instead of black hair. She was like, mm. totally di- and everyone Lucy around Robinson. Going, who's that? Mm. Lucy mm. Robinson, that was it. Yeah. So yeah, there was I a few of them nice in Neighbours, wasn't there? A few of them in Neighbours, they, they just took, soaps all the time. They just took the character and just went ran with it, didn't they? Yeah. They've done it in Corrie, haven't they? In Corrie, I, I haven't watched Corrie for years, but I know that the uh, who's the thingy, not bald, is it Mike Baldwin's son or one of those ones? And one of the Tilsleys, they've been played by about four different people. It's when they go away, like all the like the kids when they're originally in it, and yeah. they go away and then they go, and then like some like big hunk of a fella suddenly Comes turns back. up and they go, who's that? Like, it's Nick Tilsley! <laughs> and you're like, the lad's like, like, yeah, you know, like because suddenly, they need, you know, they do it in EastEnders yeah. all the time. Eating six eggs a day with yeah. the arms that, you know, Gaston <laughs> turned up. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And you get the arms. It's little yeah. Jimmy Bones! Bones. <laughs> and he's like, Whoa. Yeah. And he's back. I've got having you shot off. I've come for the Vic. <laughs> Because they they always come for the Vic, don't they? Like the Vic. Why? I know, like the Vic's the bloody. I know. They always Champions come League. for the Vic. Hell of a turn and up for the Vic. Come for the Vic. The Vic is like a championship belt in it, and mm, then it is. Vying Hell for in it. a cell. Like, it whoever, is, isn't it? Whoever holds it is like the world champion. I've come point. for the Vic, and it's secrets. Yeah. <laughs> right, we're going to finish with Ned, because it is the last sort of podcast. He's going to my way. He is going to sing he did it his way, very much. Ned, have you got anything to add? Have you got animal news you want to update us on? Have you got anything yeah. anything you want to say to the, the listeners? I've always got animal news because I'm always, you know... Looking at animals. It. Okay, go on then. I read this one yesterday. Okay, take it away, Ned. And it was like Queen Ant. And what it was, it was in a different country. You know, like they have different countries where they just have animals and no humans. But isn't an ant an insect? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's an animal. Okay, fine. Carry on. Carry on. So it was in one of those countries where they just have insects and animals and no humans. Right. Yeah. And these ants were getting this disease, this infection. Oh yeah. Okay. And it would turn them into zombie ants. Okay. And what they were doing, they were turning over the zombie ants to the queen, and the queen would would, would kill them. Right. Um. Very much like hell in the cell. I was thinking, what if what mm. if these these infected ants, mm. you know, you know, like animals and in- insects go on holiday and that, or like they migrate. What if they all came to where humans were? Mm. And Called they died. Earth. You know, and, and this infection carried on to us. This is the last we of us. We, we this don't is have the to, plot to the last of us. We don't have to. This really happened. But this is the plot to They've the last of us. They've got queens who will slay them all. We just lose our heads, wouldn't we? We're not ants. They, they're all do. They all have. They've got a way of life, don't they? They all work. They, all, they get up. They go to work. They go to bed. Uh, okay. Get up. Go. Did home, you go it. to bed? And then, <laughs> oh, yeah, I will. Yeah. Go to work. <laughs> you know, they don't have days off or anything. They don't. Mm. They don't have people going. Oh, I'm sick of this and quit the job and they go off on their own. They're all. You could be knackered if you were an ant. We don't have that. So mm. are we going? How would we deal with that? <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm more confused than Sean yeah. Dyche's tactics, in all fairness, but fair play. It, it's a I'm, terrifying I just posture. want to know where these countries are that don't have humans mm-hmm. and only have ants. Yeah. And you animals. go on holiday. Have the, a- the Amazon. The Amazon. The Amazon. The Amazon, yeah. The Amazon, yeah. The Amazon, yeah. The Amazon's river rather than a country. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. It, it, the I'm Amazon well, forest. Well pointed out. Mm, there is a forest. Yeah, yeah. it's a rainforest. It'd yeah. be inter- what would be dead interesting is if that is a conspiracy theory, mm. then, of yours. 
No, it's a real truth. The, it's a real, real truth. It is a real truth, it's, and it is also the plot last of The Last of, of Us. Yeah. The, 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 uh, they found out this. <laughs> they found out. Science. Science, Science. yeah. Science. Well, I don't know how, because there's no humans there, but... Once again... I believe there are humans yeah. in the Amazon There's rainforest. There's indigenous tribes in the Amazon rainforest. Oh, so Maybe they've been infected. Maybe. maybe they're all infected and that's why they don't speak and stuff because they're zombies. Maybe. Zombie tribes. It's <laughs> eat each other. It, it's one to leave the listeners yeah. mulling over mm. and thinking. Yeah. So it's a, you've, you've, you've put us all in suspense now. Yeah. Conversations the It is. Mm. It is. It is. So... It's, I, I feel like it's a brilliant way for you to leave the podcast now mm. uh, on that mic drop, mic drop yeah. bombshell of um, <laughs> peopleless countries. Something peopleless to think about. It is. It, it is, is definitely. We already have zombies. That's, they're already here. They're already here. Okay. Yeah. On the moon. Fair play. It does sound Fair. like the last of us though. It, mm. it, I mean, it literally and is the last of us. Sam. Should, get, should we? Just, should we be more like I ants? Just need to this quickly. Go on, Sam, no, go on. Which is, go on. I, I I was working with this agent a couple of years ago, and he was encouraging me to write some like TV script ideas. He can't say he was a zombie, script, but, but, okay. but uh, well, yeah. no, I mean, he, he replied to his emails like a zombie, which is why me and him <laughs> on the way together. But uh, <laughs> we, uh, in fact, I got his out of office that he'd moved companies when I sent an email to him once and he hadn't told me. I was like, well, this is a terrible agent, isn't it? This isn't going to work. Terrible away. relationship we've got. So mm. I think it's time for us to cut ties, even though he'd already cut ties by the looks of it before I decided to cut ties with him. But uh, <laughs> I'm getting to the leads now. But yeah. the, the idea I came up with, and I, I, I was on this Zoom call with him, I said, right, so there's a there's a, there's a media baron who owns this big company and he's, 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 He's got these sons and daughters, and he doesn't know who to pass it on to. And then he gets mm. in and he passes away. And he just went, "That's succession." And I went, "Oh!" And he went, "That's the that's the story of succession." And I'd never heard of it. And I basically just outlined outlined a show that was already on season three. <laughs> so then he oh, said, well. "Have you got any other good ideas?" And I started to explain the plot of Pulp Fiction as a joke. <laughs> to see if he go, oh, that's yeah. been done as well. And he went, yeah. that sounds really good. I went, that's Pulp Fiction, you know, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, all it him. shows, Sam, is you had an idea that someone else had, and it was successful. Good idea. It? So, essentially, yeah. you are you producing just have, good ideas. You just have to get there a little bit earlier. Just a bit quicker. Yeah. You were just, just a bit you know, quicker. Just, just <laughs> make that your mantra. <laughs> Do it a bit quicker. Or if he got his emails a bit quicker. <laughs> yeah, that might have helped. You might have sent that before the session Let's started. blame him for this. I me. think so. I think I so. Think I always get good ideas for Christmas films. Man meets woman. Woman has dog. Man adopts dog and moves in with woman. And they have Christmas together. <laughs> Are you allowed to just adopt the woman's dog without her say so? No, he becomes the dog. Dogs up for it, it's fine. He's the baby dad. <laughs> is that what it is? That's the criteria. The, the dog, dog says, "Yeah, yeah, you we're, we're, we're buzzing." Dog. Right before this descends into total cameo, if it hasn't I don't already. It's descended in chaos. It's just more descended into what the fuck's going on. Well, you know what I mean. That kind of chaos yeah. of, of people go. losing Ned, brain Ned, cells. Ch- Ned Channel Twenty Four Christmas Lamp. There, mm. we should make our own meat cutes and act them out. Put them online. We haven't got time. You're leaving us. Yeah. Meet on that note, thank you very much, Ned, for your input. Do, you can do that on your new yeah, company. Your new thanks. company. I'm sure they'll be, be made fine. up with that. Sam, massive thanks, mate. As always, um, thank you know, you. If, only, if only you talked about your tour yeah. a bit more, we'd have been buzzing. Uh, listen, get it? your tickets. <laughs> plug it right now. Go on. Go on. Comedy.com. Get there now. I'll put a link under the YouTube video. I'm that desperate. People can do it. Do it, man. Do it. Do, do it. it. It's going to be great. It's for the Norwich Massive. Yeah. Do it. The Norwich and Bristol right. Massive are just Pulled can't wait. They're ready. Let's sell boarding out. Let's sell it out. Let's do sell boarding out. If you yeah. don't sell, you know, if you can't do boarding on a Tuesday night, Sam, then what is the point? Yeah, right. Point. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all that. Thanks for listening. <laughs> See you later. Bye.